Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday, May 18th. Thanks so much for being here. We're going to do a series on the Old Testament character of Joseph. Old Testament characters are so helpful to us because they're placed in these narratives of life that unfold pretty much the way our lives unfold. And it wasn't always obvious how the hand of God was working, just like it's not always obvious in our lives. And yet, as we see the stories unfold, we see the careful planning and care of God. And that's exactly what we want to learn from Joseph, so that we don't always judge things in the immediate, right now, but we evaluate things in God's purposes and God's timetable. So in Genesis 37, we begin to hear the story of Joseph unfold. He's Rachel's son, who was Jacob's favorite wife, and then Joseph winds up being Jacob's favorite son. So you can imagine with 11 brothers and at least one sister, being the favorite is not necessarily going to make you the most popular candidate for um, sibling of the year. And that was exactly the case of Joseph. And to add to that, Joseph felt some of this privilege and entitlement. And so as a young man, he felt free to let his brothers know his status. And again, that didn't go over well either. So let's pick up the story here. Joseph was a young man of 17, was tending his flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah and his father's wives, and he had brought their father a bad report about them. Not exactly a great way to have relationships. Now Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other, other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made a richly, a richly ornamented, ornamented robe for him. Some say coat of many colors, but ornaments, rich design, beautiful tapestry. When his brothers saw that his father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word for, to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, and suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. And while your sheaves gathered around mine, and they bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. And then he had another dream. Now you would think after that first experience, maybe we might not want to share it again, but no, Joseph's going to do it again. And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. I'm sure they were excited to hear this. I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and love and stars were bowing down to me. You can imagine, the, if they were angry before, it's off the charts now. When he told his father, he, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous and angry of him. But his father kept this thing in his mind. So Jacob wasn't thrilled about what Joseph's dream was, but nevertheless, he filed it away because he understood how dreams worked in that, in that culture, and sometimes God worked through dreams directly to them. So we can imagine the type of tension that is going on in this family. Joseph is enjoying his status as most favored son, and certainly appears to be rubbing it in. Now, the fact that his dreams were actually signs from God of what would happen, Joseph was, the dreams, the dreams were legitimate, but what could have made a difference here is Joseph did not have to, have to communicate them in the way that he did. So just because we come across something 
and it's right or it's going well for us or we have some understanding, I'm not necessarily obligated to go and tell everybody about it. But Joseph here appears to be clueless about the impact of his pride and arrogance on his brothers. And that's what I want to leave us with this morning. Because as we, as we see the story of Joseph unfold over the rest of his life, his brothers are seething with hatred towards him. And they were wrong to do that. Jacob wasn't doing a good job of overseeing things. But Joseph bears some responsibility here too because we don't see humility in the 17-year-old. Surprise, right? <laughs> but God had good things for Joseph. And the amazing thing is, is that his brothers would be blessed in this way. But what I want to take away with today is, just because someone is arrogant, just because there is tension and hatred, doesn't mean that that's the end of the story. Rather, instead of thinking about how wrong this is or how stupid someone is or how mad you are at them, take a step back and say, how does God want me to respond to this? How can I bring honor to God here instead of being outraged at my arrogant brother? See, that's a good lesson for us. That's a good lesson to teach our children because we know that God had great things for Joseph. He also had great things for his brothers. But in the moment, all we see is his tension. So I want to leave us with this morning. Don't let these moments rule the way you look at life and treat others. Let God's word take that place. And not your anger, not your emotions, not your feelings. And that's the thought for today. And that will... Lord willing, tonight we'll continue uh, talking about Joseph. Again, thanks so much for being here. Uh, love your feedback. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the uh, subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and you'll get these videos automatically. Thanks so much for being here, and Lord, Lord willing, we'll see you tonight. Bye-bye.